So one of the most exciting features coming in Flash CS5 is the ability to take your Flash application and actually compile it to a native iPhone application. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you the current workflow that we have for this. Now it's important to note that this is an early pre-release version um, of, Fla of Flash CS5. So the exact steps that I'm showing you may change in the final release version. Um, any APIs may also change. Um, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a simple iPhone application, compile it, and then put it onto your iPhone. So we can see in the welcome screen I have a new option here to create an iPhone application. So when I select that it's basically creating a new flash document that's exactly the right um, width and height um, for the iPhone. Um, now the process of building an iPhone application in flash is very similar to building an Air application. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bump up my frame rate to 30 frames per second. I'm going to make the background color black. Now I'm going to create a really simple application that just responds to the accelerometer. I'm going to have a movie clip that actually moves based on the accelerometer in the iPhone. So let me first save this project. I'll save it to the desktop. I'll call it Ball Move. Okay, so now what I can do is I can start building my application. And again, I can build it exactly the same way that I build any Flash movie. Um, so I'm just going to get the oval tool. I'm going to draw out a green ball here. And now I want to turn that into a movie clip. So convert to symbol. I'm going to keep the registration point in the center. I'll call that ball. And then also come and give it an instance name of ball. Now I also want to turn on cache's bitmap um, for this movie clip so that it's actually um, just cached as a bitmap on the phone rather than um, having to continuously redraw vectors. Now it's important to note that we actually now have hardware acceleration um, for the iPhone that you can use. Um, I'm not going to use it in this example because some of the APIs uh, surrounding that are actually uh, going to be changed. So, um, But uh, we do have hardware acceleration support. But in this example we're just going to use software rendering. So I have my movie clip here on the stage. Um, now I want to start writing some, just some simple action script that's going to move this um, ball around based on the accelerometer. So let me just rename this layer to ball, create a new layer above that called actions and lock it. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do if I want to respond to the accelerometer is I need to create a new instance of the accelerometer class. So I'm going to say var acc, and then we can see here accelerometer, and it's actually in the flash.sensors package, which is a new package, and again, this is based on Flash Player 10.1. So you're going to be able to use the accelerometer on other mobile devices as well, not just the iPhone. So equals new accelerometer. So now that I have this new accelerometer instance, I can now respond to the accelerometer event dot update event. So ACC, add event listener, and then accelerometer dot update. And I'm going to have that call a function called update. Okay, so now this accelerometer update event, it doesn't fire fast enough so uh, for me to actually do my um, moving of the ball inside of this event. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the changes of this update event in a couple of variables and then in an on enter frame I'm going to interpolate between those variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables, one target x and the other one target Y. And now let me create that update function. So function update and it's going to be of type accelerometer event. And you're also seeing some of the new code features here in Flash CS5 which is very welcome change. Um, so now that I have this all I'm going to do is I'm going to set those two um, properties I just created. So TX and then inside of this event object we can see we have acceleration X. So that's essentially the acceleration value from the accelerometer sensor. 
Now this number is too small um, to, you know, to actually use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by 100. And I'm going to do a similar thing for the Y. Now I myself am very new to this API, so, um, but I'm just showing you a simple example of what you can do here. Again, you can get the values for the X, Y, and um, Z properties from the accelerometer. We're just going to use X and Y here. Okay, so now every time the accelerometer update event fires, I'm getting the value, increasing the value um, here and storing it in these two variables. Now I want to actually, in an on enter frame, I want to actually move the ball based on that. So add event listener, event.enter frame. I'll have it call a function called loop. So function loop. So now real simple inside of here, I'm going to update the ball.x property. I'm going to add an, an amount to that. And again, this is basic kind of uh, easing code here. So what I want to do is I want to find out the value um, of the current ball.x plus this um, tx variable, this target x variable. So what I'm going to do is inside of here, I'm going to say ball.x plus tx. And that's essentially going to be the new target um, for the ball.x. So now what I need to do is I need to subtract that from ball.x and now again I can multiply this um, by a number here just to um, decrease that value a little bit so each time we come through um, we're going to be um, over time we're going to be approaching the target which is ball.x plus tx and again this is kind of basic um, easing functionality here so it's going to be a similar thing for the ball.y so let me just change these properties this is going to be ty, this is going to be y. Now in order to get it working correctly for the accelerometer here, I actually want to subtract ty from the ball.y um, just so that it works the way that you, know, you think it should once it gets onto the phone. And ball.y. So here's my basic um, accelerometer based um, animation. Now obviously if I test this, and we can see what happens if I hit command enter, and this is actually going to test this just like it does an air application. So we can see it's actually running an ADL um, just like um, any other air application you create in Flash. But obviously the accelerometer is not, you know, there is no accelerometer on my Mac. Um, so in order to test these phone specific features, I'm actually going to have to put this application onto my iPhone. Now we are looking at ways in the future of being able to simulate these different types of things, but for right now I'm going to have to actually put this, compile this, and put it onto my iPhone to see uh, this animation happening. So how do we actually compile this um, application? So again, it's very similar to um, compiling an Air application. So I'm going to go into the Air Settings window. Now it's important to note again that this workflow um, may change as far as um, the, the UI you're seeing here and the, and the menus and things like that. Um, so under profiles I want to make sure mobile device is selected which it is. Now under signature this is where you basically um, you have to become a member of the iPhone developer program with Apple. So that is essentially something where you pay um, $99 a year and that's going to allow you to actually develop iPhone applications. Um, now there's two files that you need to generate from the Apple website in order to compile. You need to have a iPhone developer certificate and we can see down here the iPhone digital signature. This is pointing to the certificate that I downloaded from the Apple website and I need to put in my password here. The other is called a mobile provisioning profile. Now that actually has um, my app ID and it also has this bundle seed ID which I need to put in here. So actually let me uh, have that on the clipboard. So let me just seed and here's the actual um, bundle seed ID. And again these two pieces of information are things that you actually download from Apple. So I'll paste that in. And now under icons, now I can actually provide the icons for my application. 
So there's three icons you provide. One is a 29 by 29, and I already have these created here on the desktop. So these are just PNGs. Then a 57 by 57 pixel icon. And then lastly, a 512 by 512. So there are my icons set now. And now if I go to the output tab, we can see I have different options for the output type. Obviously, I want to create an iPhone application, so I'm going to check off iPhone. Now, one of the things to note is the compilation process can take quite a long time. So this is not something where, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot slower than just testing your application here on the desktop. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start publishing this. So now it's actually compiling my application. Now we can see under here we have different deployment types. If I just want to publish it quickly, or as quickly as possible, to put on my device, I want to choose the one that's selected here. If I want to actually debug the application, so I can actually receive trace statements from the application running on my iPhone here in Flash, I can choose this. If I want to deploy it in an ad hoc fashion um, to up to 100 iPhones, I can choose this. But most importantly, if I want to actually sell this on the App Store, I want to choose this deployment one. And so now it's finished compiling. I'll click OK. So now on the desktop, we can see I have this ballmove.ipa file. That is the iPhone application. So now what I want to do is I want to put this um, onto my iPhone. So I'm going to open iTunes here. And I already have my iPhone connected. Now all I need to do is to actually drag that IPA file directly into iTunes, into my library. And now we can see here it's showing up in my applications. There's my ball move application with the custom icon. Now I want to go to my iPhone, go to applications, and I can see it's checked off here so it's going to be um, added to my phone. I'm going to hit sync, and now it's actually going to um, copy that ball move application onto my iPhone. You can see it's installing right there. And there we go, it's finished installing. Now actually, I'm going to launch Photo Booth so you can see this actually on the device here. So let me get this... Let me get this started. So there's the um, the custom icon here for my application and when I launch that up we can see now I can actually move this ball around um, based on the accelerometer so extremely easy um, you know it's it's kind of amazing how much easier it is to create applications in this fashion rather than using um, objective C which is uh, quite a bit more complicated um, so you can see I have really nice motion there and again, if I had hardware acceleration enabled, um, I'd be able to, to get really, really fast performance. But you can see there's really nice movement here based on the accelerometer. So let me quickly show you um, a couple of the examples that have hardware acceleration. These were created by engineers on, on the player team. So this is an example with a bunch of graphic sprites uh, that are being animated. And again, this is using um, the OpenGL uh, or the hardware acceleration on the actual iPhone um, and you can see really really fast performance this is using a different API than caches bitmap um, which actually keeps these things cached even when you rotate them change the opacity and, and do different things like that so really fast performance um, the other one is a 3D dice example which has physics applied so here we, we have three um, die here that are actually moving around in 3D space um, with physics applied to them. And you can see we get really nice, really nice performance out of this because, again, we're using um, the new hardware acceleration features. So even as these things are rotating in 3D space, they remain cached on the GPU on the phone, so giving you really nice performance. So that's the basics um, right for now of creating iPhone applications using Flash CS5. Again, things may change slightly um, in the final release version, but you can see it's incredibly easy now to create um, nice iPhone applications using Flash.